A giant drifts in from the sea. Another cruise ship arrives in Venice. Hundreds of cabins, thousands of passengers. Restaurants, bars, cinemas and swimming pools. A very modern floating resort suddenly dwarfing this ancient city. Some in Venice bitterly resent the coming of the big ships and they protested earlier this year. They worry about pollution and about the possible impact of the waves created by the liners. And for some, the ships are symbolic of a tourism industry that is overwhelming Venice. I can't stand the cruise ship business. It's the most evident demonstration of the vulgar exploitation of my city. The beauty of Venice is undoubted, but the city pays for it like a prostitute that is too beautiful and sells herself. But the cruise industry says pollution from the ships is within European guidelines. And it says the slow-moving vessels do no harm to the city's medieval buildings. Of course, we inspected also and made surveys, very serious surveys, concerning the water flow produced by the ships uh, up to 330 meters, uh, which uh, come into the port of Venice. And, uh, of course, the kind of very slow and soft flow was the same uh, of uh, uh, the natural tide we have in Venice. So there's no damage at all. And these passengers, the cruise industry argues, have every right to come. Venice, it would say, is for all the world to enjoy, and the tourists bring the city huge amounts of money. It's reckoned that around 60,000 visitors come every day by sea, road and rail. Far too many, say those fighting to preserve the charms of old Venice. This row feeds into a much wider debate. There are those who argue that Venice simply must seize its economic opportunities if it's to thrive. But there are others who constantly fear that this beautiful place is selling its soul. And while this great debate goes on, Venice continues to receive its vast tide of tourists. Alan Johnston, BBC News, Venice.